So, hello everyone, my name is Emmanuel Vado. I'm Manu at FreeBSD.org, and uh, we'll be talking about uh, what's happening on FreeBSD before the kernel is even loaded on onboard looks, so specifically uh, bootloaders. So we talk about uBoot, which is the uh, main bootloader that we use on onboard for FreeBSD. Uh, we will talk about the uBoot API, which is a concept that we are using for our loader on FreeBSD. Uh, we talk about the DistroBoot CMD, which is a generic way to boot OSs uh, on uBoot. Uh, we'll talk about EFI, which Uboot is using also. Uh, the master Uboot port that was created uh, somewhere three or four months ago. A uh, little note on DTS, which are device tree file, uh, files that are describing the hardware you are running on. And some notes about uh, how to upstream on uh, Uboot and Linux community. Uh, first, I would like to thank my employer, Gandhi, uh, which won't allow me to be there while I'm not talking about anything that I do for them. Uh, and he's also paying for the travel uh, and accommodation expense. Uh, for those who don't know, Gandhi is a registrar, so you can buy a, D a domain name, a certificate uh, for, from us. Uh, we also have some hosting uh, products. We have some simple hosting where you can buy some uh, container, where you can host your uh, PHP, uh, Ruby, or Python application. And uh, also you can, um, you can uh, buy some uh, VM. Uh, with, and we have FreeBSD VM 11.0 uh, since uh, some time now. A uh, little bit of warning, there's a lot of acronym in this talk. Uh, I will try to explain every acronym that I will use, but if I forget, and you don't get one, uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to, to ask me to explain it. So, U-Boot. Uh, U-Boot means universal bootloader. Uh, it's a de facto standard for ARM board, MIPS board, uh, ARM64. Uh, it even supports PowerPC uh, and x86. Uh, it's really used in the embedded world. It's mostly or mainly split in two parts, the uh, SPL, which is a secondary program loader, and the main U-Boot, which does all the things of the device uh, enumeration, in, uh, initialization, etc. And it can execute multiple types of executable. Uh, the first one is a U-Boot image, which is a specially crafted image for U-Boot, um, which we are not using on FreeBSD. I think NetBSD is using the U-Boot image to boot their kernel. Uh, recently, there was the addition of the fit image. Fit means flat, flatten image tree, or something like that. Uh, this is uh, an image where you describe it using the DTS syntax. Uh, we will see later what is uh, exactly a DTS. It supports uh, ELF and row binary, uh, which we are using on FreeBSD to boot a loader. And it also supports EFI since a uh, year ago or something like that. Uh, so the way that onboard are uh, booting is very different than a uh, traditional PC. On a traditional PC, you have um, your BIOS uh, at some memory location. And when the processor boots, it will simply execute the, execu the instruction food, uh, at this location. On Harmony, uh, this is a bit the same, but the first stage, so the boot ROM, is inside the SOC. Most of the time, you cannot modify it. It's burned by the uh, SOC maker. Um, and what the boot ROM does is uh, simply bootstrap the secondary loader, so, so that's why we call it SPL, uh, which can be found in different sources. Uh, for example, SD cards. Uh, this is mainly mainly used for uh, for the the common uh, onboard. Uh, this can be uh, some SPA flash. Flash. Uh, it can boot sometimes over USB, sometimes even over uh, uh, Ethernet, etc. So in the case of U-Boot, uh, the SPL is also done by the U-Boot community. Uh, it's a program 
uh, that is specified for each board, each SOC. Uh, and what it does is initialize the DRAM, so the main RAM from, uh, for the board. Uh, talk to, so talk to the DRAM controller to set it at the right frequency uh, and then load the uh, main U-boot image into the DRAM and execute it. On FreeBSD, U-boot uh, then loads UBLDR. Uh, UBLDR is a specially craft version of loader uh, of, uh, that is using the U-boot API, which I will talk about in a minute. Uh, then UBLDR is loading the DTB, so DTB is a compiled form of a DTS, uh, so this is a binary blob that is describing the hardware, every peripheral that you have either on the SOC or on the board, and then it loads the kernel and executes the kernel. So the UBoot API is a syscall-based API, uh, it was developed uh, at the beginning by Semi-Alf, who is doing a lot of uh, FreeBSD embedded related work. Um, it gives us access to console, so you can have your, uh, you can put some strings on the serial, um, and to some devices, mostly storage and network. So UBLDR, using this uh, standard syscall uh, based API, can uh, enumerate um, SD card, this device, uh, sometimes USB work. Uh, it can also enumerate network interfaces. If you build there, uh, want to uh, PXE boot some, uh, some stuff, etc. We used to have a lot of local patches in all our different ports from the different boards uh, in the port tree. Uh, so the first thing that I did was uh, take those patches, uh, see if they still make sense because most of the U-boots that we used to have uh, were uh, from some, something like two or three years ago, maybe. Uh, clean up, uh, do some more, and uh, upstream everything uh, in U-boots, so in many U-boots. And what I did also is add a new K-config, so U-boot is using K-config, like the Linux kernel, to uh, configure, uh, configure for uh, specific target, targets. Uh, what we used to do in the port tree is uh, add the uh, config API defined in some include file somewhere, uh, depending on the board. Uh, so it was not really clean to do that. So I just added a new config API. So you just uh, gmake menu config, select the config API or whatever, and uh, then you have uh, an, API an API compiled uh, U-boot, which is, which is needed for UBLDR. Um, since a year or two ago, U-Boot is porting the device model, so that's what the DM means here, uh, from the Linux kernel. Uh, this is mainly helping them to uh, port some driver from Linux to U-Boot uh, easily. Uh, the U-Boot API is not actively maintained, and uh, every Ethernet driver that have been reworked uh, so re rewrite to, uh, to use the GM, uh, so the new device model driver, um, don't work with, uh, with that, which means we, you cannot use a uh, Ethernet device on uh, UBLDR, but you can use Ethernet device on U boot directly. Um, I started to look how hard it would be to port the U-Boot API uh, to support the new Ethernet uh, device model. Uh, it does not seem very hard, but I found another way to do it more easily, so I won't be touching anymore the API for, I think that it's, for now it's safe, it's okay to use it, but we want to, uh, we want to go away from it. Because I'm the only guy who have ever written some code in the last three or four years, something like that, and I don't want to code on it anymore. Um, so the distroboot CMD, as I said before, it's a generic way to finding uh, Linux in the possible available media on the board. Uh, U-boot uses uh, a shell-like scripted language, 
So what the Distribute CMD does is uh, scanning all the available media, so SD card, USB, uh, Ethernet, etc. And if it finds a Linux kernel uh, and uh, in ETRD, it will simply load it. Um, since this is the way that most of the Linux distribution are uh, booting Linux uh, with your boot, I simply added a config distro of FreeBSD, so name might be a little bit weird to see distro and FreeBSD at the same time, but this is how the, how the config are, are named in U-Boot. Um, and what it does is simply uh, search for UBLDR in the available media, and if it's found, it will be executed directly. So we won't have to modify the, the, the boot script from U-Boot. Uh, what I want is people Completing mainstream U-Boot, enabling one or two options to support FreeBSD, copy it on the SD card for the uh, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone, or whatever, and everything just works. Uh, this patch are almost upstream. Uh, I run into some problems uh, for other stuff uh, on the caches, flushes, uh, stuff I won't be talking about today. Uh, but I will resume my work soon, uh, and I think this we, we could have uh, for the releases of September of U-Boot, uh, this, this part, everything upstream. So this is what it looks like, uh, so nothing really interesting. So it's shell-based shell uh, language, so if we found uh, ubr.bin, uh, so yeah, we have two loaders on FreeBSD currently, uh, we have the bin version and the L version. The L version uh, is compiled for every board uh, because it has uh, a specified load address, uh, while the bin version is uh, position independent executable, which can be compiled for every board and running on every board. Um, I don't think we need anymore the L version of the UBLDR. I need to check every U-boot port uh, to see if they, if they still uh, use them and replace, uh, replace that, then we can deprecate uh, the L version of the U-boot loader. So EFI. Uh, EFI means Extended Firmware Interface, if I'm not mistaken. I should say UEFI. Uh, EFI is mainly for the 1.0 or 1.x uh, releases, uh, while UEFI is for the 2.x uh, releases. Uh, it started for IS64, so the Italian platform from uh, Intel. Um, it's a new way of doing uh, BIOS, basically. It's a specification. Uh, you have a reference implementation named Tianocore. Uh, which most of the hardware uh, maker are using. So if you have a, a Lenovo laptop or a HP laptop, you're mostly using uh, the Tianocore implementation. It's open source. Uh, a year ago, when some U-Boot developer from SUS uh, wanted to add, sorry, wanted to add uh, EFI support for U-Boot, uh, he started looking at Tianocore implementation. Apparently, he wasn't pleased uh, because the code quality, from what he say, I have I've never looked at the Tianocore uh, source code, so I don't know. Uh, so he decided to uh, re-implementing everything. And by re-implementing everything, I mean re-implementing only the stuff that is that he care about. So U-Boot does have some UEFI support, but it doesn't support everything that UEFI specification uh, states. Um, and even if it does, sometimes it does not really work. Uh, they took some, uh, some way around some uh, part of the specification. Uh, but yeah, things are coming along. Uh, things are, are more cleaner right now. Uh, but we are still missing a lot of things in the UEFI implementation of U-Boot. The reason I want to use UEFI uh, even on ARM32, uh, it's because we have one loader to rule them all then. 
uh, it's simpler to use only uh, loader TFI, uh, not care about UBLDR anymore. Uh, loader TFI is used on uh, ARM64 already. Uh, it's used on MD64, of course. Uh, the other reason is that we can easily have video output uh, via the EFI graphic output protocol. We don't have a really good uh, video output support uh, on FreeBSD on Hamboard. Uh, U-Boot have some relatively uh, correct uh, frame buffer support. And since U-Boot support EFI and most of the boards that it supports uh, support the graphic output protocol, for us it will mean uh, that uh, we could directly use uh, EFA FB, so the EFE frame buffer uh, kernel driver from FreeBSD to have video output, at least basic one. Uh, you couldn't, you you couldn't have some uh, dual screen or uh, have some LVDS and HDMI at the same time, but you could have some basic output screen, uh, which would be good. Also, there is some active development compared to the U-Boot SPI. As I was saying, uh, this is mostly done by SUS, uh, which is always good to have a company uh, that is back uh, backing the development of, uh, of some technology. Uh, U-Boot API, as I say, uh, I'm the only one who ever committed code since the uh, last three years or four years. Here we have a company back in the code, so it's better to use that. Uh, right now, the FE, FI status, uh, the console mode are not correct. This is the first problem I ran into when I wanted to boot uh, the BeagleBone Black uh, with UFI. The serial console mode were not uh, prop correctly, uh, I think that we're seeing everything is upstream now. Um, we do have some local patch that I, that I have on upstream, it's to export the MBR partition. So on the EFI, you can either uh, talk to the disk, uh, to the raw disk directly, or you can say, or you can ask the UFI uh, implementation, okay, give me the list of partition uh, that this, this disk device has. Um, EFI is really tied to GPT partitioning. MBR partitioning should not exist in the EFI world, except for the PMBR, the protective MBR. The thing is, most of the embedded world uh, and embedded board don't support GPT partitioning. If you take the BeagleBone Black, for example, uh, the weight boot is the SOC boot ROM will look at the first bootable uh, FAT12 or 16 or 32 uh, partition in the MBR, MBR table and will load some file from it. This cannot work with GPT partitioning. So the patch that I've done and not yet upstream as this is the reason mostly is uh, it's a bit of a hack because you shouldn't expose MBR partition in a UFI world. But we have no choice uh, right now for this kind of, uh, this kind of board who are relying on uh, MBR partitioning. We still have issue in our SM BIOS code. Uh, so U-Boot for some unknown reason decided to expose some SM BIOS data. So that expose uh, board information, board serial, board maker, etc. cetera. Uh, our SM BIOS code is, is made for x86, so it doesn't care about alignment, uh, and of course on ARM you need to have some strict alignment, so I need to work on the SMBIOS code, or maybe totally disable SMBIOS code on the ARM world, because we, we don't care uh, a lot about SMBIOS information, we have all the, uh, all the information in some other places. So the U-Boot master port was created five or six months ago by one Uh As I say, I, we used to have a lot of different uh, U-Boot version for each board. Uh, and while I was working on uh, upstreaming uh, everything from, uh, from our ports to the, to the main U-Boot, Warner decided to create a master port that every board will be using. Uh, so we have one, one place, one unique place uh, where all our patches are sitting uh, before I upstream them. Uh, for now, it's tracking is GitHub fork. Uh, we have created a, 
a repository under the under the FreeBSD organization GitHub uh, group. Uh, we need to make the switch. Uh, it supports all the main boards that uh, that are using the generic kernel uh, on FreeBSD. So all the all winner board, uh, the AM 335X, which is the big bone, and some uh, IMX6 uh, board. Uh, we plan to extend it to support also the Raspberry Pi, uh, U-Boots, or whatever device that is running FreeBSD uh, should be now using this U-Boot master port as it all, all the patches needed for FreeBSD. Uh, on DTS and DTB, so as I said, DTS, device tree sources, uh, are file describing the hardware. Uh, it's because on ARM, most of the hardware in the SOC um, is not enumerable like a PCI bus. So you have to know that you have some internet card at this address and uh, either you hard collect the, you hard -code the data uh, inside the kernel or you have a file somewhere describing the hardware. Um, we used to have a lot of custom DTS in FreeBSD. Uh, because at the time, we were not sure that we could use the one from Linux. Uh, no things have been resolved, we can use them, no problem. Uh, but we still have some, some patch uh, for some DTS uh, or some total custom one, like all the Marvel, uh, Marvel board are using some custom uh, DTS file. Um, I've updated all our DTS uh, two or three months ago, so now we are sync with Linux 4.10. Uh, I should update them uh, to Linux 4.12, I think it's out. Um, and in base, we have uh, DTC, which is, which is a device tree compiler, uh, 1.4.3, which support overlays. Um, the reason we had patch on the DTS, it's because at the time you couldn't have DTB overlay. Uh, now that DTC supports overlay officially, what we could do is always use the, the Linux uh, DTS, and if we want to add some custom nodes or uh, uh, some, uh, some nodes that aren't uh, present in the Linux DTS, and we don't want to wait the next, uh, the next uh, release of Linux, we can simply add an overlay uh, our loader can load the overlay uh, DTB. Uh, so what it does is simply uh, does uh, take uh, two, two DTB, merge them together, and use all the information. So this is something that we should do. Uh, I've not yet looked at really how can we do it properly, uh, but yeah, this is something that we should do. Upstreaming. Um, when I started to to say to people that I wanted to upstream our UBIT patches and our DTS patches, so either to, either to Linux for the DTS or uh, to uh, the U-Boot, uh, to U-Boot for U-Boot, uh, people told me, ah, oh, no, you know, uh, Linux don't care about FreeBSD and uh, U-Boot don't care about FreeBSD too. Uh, well, this is not true. This is definitely not true. A lot of people in Linux, um, like that we are using the same DTS as them because we don't have the same problem. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, upstreaming, DTS changing, uh, DTS change, sorry. Uh, if the change looks okay, looks normal, they will be accepted. Even if it's free for FreeBSD. Uh, I've, ev I've even upstreamed some change saying the git log that the Linux driver doesn't use this, uh, this property, but FreeBSD uses this. So we need, we, need to, we need to add this, and this was accepted. So there is a commit in the Linux tree that's saying this is for FreeBSD, which is cool. Uh, and on U-Boot, this is the same. They do care about FreeBSD uh, because they know how Linux work, uh, they know all the problem, but we have some other problem. And they happy to uh, resolve all the problems that they, that they could have. So current future work, uh, I need to finish EFI and switch FreeBSD 12 current MV6 to using it and not using UBLD anymore. Uh, as I say, most of it is working, 
there is just the issue with the SMBIOS code. I need to test the fit image. So fit is a, a flattened image tree. Uh, it's a new, relatively new uh, image type for uh, U-Boot. Uh, most of the recent M64 board, uh, the low end one, are using fit image to uh, boot something. Uh, I've managed to boot uh, our loader, uh, which was crafted inside the fit image. So we will see how we, uh, we, how we, need, how we, uh, how we will uh, do things. Do we embed the loader on the fit image? Do we embed the kernel directly? I don't know. A few thanks. One air for his U-boot master ports. Uh, Alexander Graf, who did the EFI in U-boot, uh, he was very responsive for uh, FreeBSD uh, uh, support on it. Uh, even say in, his, in some of his talk at the Embedded Linux conference that we were the first OS to use the EFI uh, functionality, which was developed by SUSE. Uh, the thing is, OpenBSD did it first, but I'm happily taking the blame for that. <laughs> uh, Tom Rooney, which is a U-boot, uh, U-boot master guy, uh, again, is very responsive to the FreeBSD problem. Uh, and it helped me a lot to uh, correctly send my patches, etc. And of course, not a lot of other people who are working on that. Thank you. Uh, that will be all. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Grub, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they want to have a common. It's the same reason that we want to use EFI on FreeBSD. They want a common point, so they want to use Grub. And the easiest way to use Grub is using the uh, EFI version of Grub. You should repeat for the people. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So the command was that the reason that the SUSE guy did the EFI implementation was to use Grub. Uh, because uh, they want to use a snapshot, etc., from the uh, from the ButterFS or whatever, and they want a common point of entry uh, for the OSS for the OS. Uh, so EFI is the solution for that, and this is the same reason that I want to use EFI for FreeBSD on ARM, ARM64, etc. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, so the question was, uh, many, how do I debug uh, U-boot while doing U-boot uh, uh, U-boot development? Uh, printf, <laughs> mostly, <laughs> mostly printf. I don't have any board with JTAG. Uh, well, I have, but I don't have, uh, either I have or, and I don't have the adapter, or either the board don't have JTAG. Uh, I think the, simple w the simplest way will be using JTAG and open uh, SCD, I think it is, open, open SCD. Uh, I've used that for other Cortex uh, M, uh, so other ARM chips, it worked great. I never used that for Cortex A, I'm sure the support is correct too. Uh, but yeah, for U-Boot I mainly do printf, which kind of suck, but kind of work. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's the other way to go. Times. Flash a LED. Yeah, okay. exactly. Another, yeah, yeah. So are you aware of the level of support of uh, NetBSD, OpenBSD, and U-Boot right now? And how much work do we need to do the different levels? Uh, so the question was, uh, do I have any info on the level of support of uh, NetBSD and OpenBSD for U-Boot? Um, the OpenBSD guys stepped uh, right, uh, right after the EFI, the first EFI patch, uh, where in the U-boot tree, they step in and say, okay, we want to use UFI. Uh, I, I think that they didn't have a UFI loader for MD64. 
uh, and that the, the first EFI loader is for ARM. So right now they're using EFI. Uh, apparently, everything works for them. Uh, they just, uh, I've looked at the code, they just bootstrap the kernel, uh, look at the, on the FFS partition or whatever. So they're not using, uh, they're not using the, um, the partition exposed by UFI, they're using raw disk, so they don't have the, the problems that I uh, ran into. Um, and for NetBSD, I think every board using UImage, which is UBoot image, uh, and you, I don't know for Tegra, because for Tegra you have DTS. For all the other boards, you don't have DTS, and everything is encoded in the kernel. Uh, so you just take the kernel, make a U-boot image, and give that to U-boot on a fat partition, uh, or something that U-boot can read, so either fat or uh, X2 or whatever. Uh, for Tegra, I don't know how do you do that. You don't know either. Well. <laughs> Any more question? Yeah. So I take it that the you said that people are happy with trying to keep reliant on DTS and UBT. Um, how are those discussions going on? And are you aware there's a website targeting a device tree? So the question was, did we add any issue uh, about DTS discussion? On the, uh, I don't know, I wasn't there at the, at the time on the FreeBSD project. Uh, but when I started doing FreeBSD work uh, one or two years ago on uh, all winner boards, we were still using some custom DTS. And the first thing that the FreeBSD developer told me is, is uh, the first thing that you should do is using the upstream one. We don't want to uh, use a custom one anymore. So I don't know how it went, uh, but right now I think everyone agrees that we should use the a common DTS across OSs. Okay. Is this Mark uh, Rutland? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. So the reason we're adapting to go is the U boot image for the for loading kernels and instead of the U boot loader. So the question was is there any reason that we are not using the U boot image uh, format for the loader of the kernel? Um, the main reason is that the U boot image you have to specify the loading address and execute address, etc. Um, so we will have to build a U-boot image for every board that we support, um, which is kind of, kind, of, uh, kind of annoying because right now we have the generic ARM image uh, kernel uh, as of, I don't know, six, six months ago. Uh, we have some UBLDR, uh, which is position uh, independent executable. So we are running off all this problem of specifying the loading and executing address. Um, but this is the same for fit image. You need to specify the address. Uh, so this is a new, the new format, new new image format. Um, this, I don't know why at the time uh, was the uh, U-boot uh, API was made, uh, why it was made. So yeah, I don't know why at the time it was this choice was made. It, it would have been much easier for us if we have took the, the NetBSD direction, for example. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. But EFI for me is solve all, all of our problems. Yeah, so the question was, is the uh, uh, EFI interfaces uh, portable on other architecture? And if I remember correctly, it works on ARM, ARM64, x86. Uh, I think that's the only platform that has 
uh, at least some development on it. Uh, I don't think it would be too much trouble to port it to PowerPC. Try. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me after if it works. But yeah, it should work. Okay, thank you.